going on guys welcome back to another video a couple of days ago I showed you how I filmed my blurry time lapses but there were a couple of people that commented and said that they didn't want to spend $60 on an ND filter for like one random purpose and I understand that so today I want to show you how to do it for free first though again we got to go outside and get some footage All right, now that we're outside, we're gonna be doing this a little different than the other tutorial. Instead of taking an actual time lapse this time, we're just gonna record a video. This will make more sense when we get back into After Effects, but essentially we wanna keep all those frames that would've been lost with the time lapse. Also, I apologize, the lighting is kinda uneven on my face here. So I'm filming at dusk right now and that's obviously going to make it easier because I can easily have a shutter of 50. So whatever time of day you're filming at, whatever the lowest your shutter speed is you can get while getting a properly exposed image, shoot that. Now that you've shot your footage, let's get into After Effects and learn how to do this. I'm actually going to be starting real quick in Premiere here, so I'm just going to drag along this clip and find a good spot to start. Probably going to want around 40 seconds of video, so that's good, and then that's good, and then we'll finish it off there. So delete the extra bits of your video, you know, select the portion that you want. Mine's around 40 seconds. Right click and click replace with After Effects Composition. And then this is going to create an After Effects composition that is completely linked with Premiere. So whatever you do in After Effects is going to show back up here in Premiere in this sequence. So this is a relatively easy process. You just want to right click this right here. It's going to turn on frame blending and that's going to make what we're about to do a little bit smoother. But right click your image, click time and click enable time remapping. Go ahead and click a stopwatch keyframe here for the first frame and then drag to the end. Go ahead and hit another stopwatch. And then what you want to do is drag this stopwatch down to around the 10% point of your entire timeline. So since mine is around 40 seconds, I'm going to drag it to 4 seconds. I know it's 45, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I found that this works best speed-wise. Essentially what you're doing here is you're dragging the timestamp from back here over to here, and that's going to create what once took this much time to play is now going to play over 4 seconds. You're basically just speeding up your footage. Obviously it's intense to play that much footage back in that short amount of time, so this is a pretty uh, CPU and computer intensive process. So kind of bear with your computer you're kind of putting it through some stress and then literally all you do from there is go into the effects and presets tab and type in CC force motion blur go ahead and drag that onto your layer it's gonna go it's gonna come over here in the effects and controls and it's already looking really good but there's a couple things we can do to make it look even better so those are obviously messed with the parameters of the effect so I'm gonna go ahead and change the shutter angle to around 360 basically what that's gonna do and what this effect does is since everything is on a tripod it just detects the moving things and forces motion blur on it see if you zoom in here this doesn't look super great it looks good but it's not great that's because the program starts at eight motion blur samples and that's essentially you can kind of see the eight divisions right here of the car and as you set that higher like if you set that at per se 50 this is obviously going to get a lot smoother but it's also going to take longer for your computer to render it so it's all about finding a happy medium of motion blur samples and speed of render so I usually end up around 25 to 30 that usually looks pretty good for me it looks way better than 8 I mean obviously if you set it to 100 it's going to be very smooth so depending on your turnaround, if you're working on a short film, obviously you can set it as high as possible. You're not really on a huge time crunch, but if you're filming a vlog, you definitely are going to want to probably set it back because it's super computer intensive to force motion blur. So now that we got that, I'm going to go ahead and trim the composition down to just be these frames. So I'm going to go to this last frame the keyframes on and hit in on my keyboard. Right click on this gray area and click trim comp to work area. And this is going to trim up your composition to only be that four second duration. Then what you want to do is hit Control M or Command M on a Mac. I think it's the same shortcut on a Mac. And this is going to bring up the render queue. Just right click lossless right here and then click QuickTime. I'm just going to do H.264 for the purposes of this tutorial. Right click, go into your folder of choice. Mine is my vlog title with free blurry time lapses. Just click it and type in time lapse force motion blur or the win and then just hit enter and like I said this can be a pretty intensive process so just let your computer do its thing depending on how much footage you scrunch down and how long your time lapse is it's probably gonna take anywhere from five to ten minutes also depending on your computer you can just go back into Premiere and start editing other stuff but yeah that's literally it and I'll show you the final result here it's actually surprisingly 
I'm gonna turn off the audio. The audio is actually hilarious because it's so sped up. It's like <laughs> Anyways, it is early in the morning. My voice is probably deeper than normal because I woke up like 30 minutes ago. But enough of that needless rambling. This is what the final effect look like. Boom, boom. And this honestly, in my opinion, looks just as good as taking a long exposure picture. The problem is, is it takes a fast moving subject to make it look better. But if you're in a pinch and you still want that nice, smooth time lapse, this is the best way to go about doing it. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to get blurry time lapses for free. You don't have to buy an ND filter, don't have to buy anything. As always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. I always appreciate feedback in the comment section below. If you want to be sure to never miss another tutorial, vlog, or step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to improve your filmmaking skills, go ahead and turn on notifications for my channel. You don't have to, but it's always an option. I'm trying to post every single day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.